is often identified with the pole, the pole star of the heavens. The tent itself is a Velten mantle, the expanse of the firmament. And other tent poles sometimes represent the four cardinal points, or they can represent the two turning points of the sun at the summer and winter solstice. We just talked about that, didn't we? Within Freemasonry and the medieval churches. Well, this thing goes way back, you see. That's fun stuff, isn't it? The tent pole theme is carried over into the pillars of the temples. And now you say, oh, well, pillars, gee, does any Freemason have any image come to mind there? Fun, isn't it? The pillars of the temples and the palaces, even the columns of the medieval churches, and the stately facades of our own public buildings right now. Pillars, yeah. Two of them at the entrances. Interesting illusion. There are two kinds of architecture of the temple. The circle and the square. The earliest nine pyramids along the Nile were perfectly square. At Gilgal, twelve stones stand in a circle. Generally, the rites are said to be in the form of a circumambulation, a walking around. Where do you do that in Freemasonry, you see? The idea is the king goes through his entire land in a great circle. This is called his royal progress, the king's tour, so to speak. He visits one by one each of the holy places, and he takes possession of his land, something he has to do every year. So it's a repeated ritual of walking around. Does that have any ring in Freemasonry of what we do? Oh, absolutely. When he arrives at each place, he circumambulates that specific spot three times. So number symbolism becomes important. Three, seven, twelve, all cosmological oriented numbers, all numbers important in Freemasonry, yes? Yeah. Well, that's the combination, the circle and the square. <laughs> Fascinating. We physically produce the symbols in our ceremonies, in our lodges, don't we? With ourselves. The point of the circle and the two parallel lines. Now, everyone who's ever been involved in the entered apprentice degree knows exactly how we as people produce those symbols, don't we? Fascinating. To the Pythagorean mystic, the cube represents perfect solidity and the sphere is perfect continual motion. The two must always be together, so we always find them combined in ancient temples. There is always motion around, but there is always stability in the center. And that's why we use the compass and the square in our craft. I mean, that's just fun, isn't it? <laughs> Ponder that for a while.